What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit, this is your host, Zach, and today, subreddit is r slash choosing beggars. This story is called, Selling a Weber Grill Dealing with a Scammy Beggar. Is that Weber or Weber? I knew a kid whose last name was Weber, and it was spelled the exact way, and people called him Weber because that's how they thought it was pronounced, but they always said it's Weber, so I'm gonna go with Weber. So this story happens back in 2002, before Facebook Marketplace and smartphones. Selling stuff was done on Craigslist and via email. There were tons of time wasters and scammers back then. Back then? <laughs> it might also be a longer one. I had bought a two-burner Weber grill. I kept this thing on an enclosed porch and covered. I cleaned this thing after each use. I love this grill. It was the first real big home purchase I did. I bought it for $300. After using it for three months, I wanted a bigger and hotter grill. We were hosting a few parties and it was a bit of an inconvenience. I talked my wife into to it and she was okay with it. But I had to sell my old grill. Enter Craigslist. I listed it for $250, which I thought was fair. It was only three months old and it was in mint shape for not being outside, cleaned, and covered after each use. The listing explained this and also said the price was firm. Also, no checks, cash only. It had to be picked up, no delivery. Cash needed to be in my hand before I handed over the grill. The ad got a ton of responses. Lots of scammers and low bidders. I took the first five that did not argue about the price and went first come, first serve. I emailed them to let them all know and contacted the first buyer. We set up a date for pickup. There were some red flags in hindsight I should have gone to the next buyer. He complained about the distance and the gas cost. He asked about getting the cover and grill tools tossed in and hinted that for $250 50, the grill should be mint, even though the ad had a ton of pictures showing it in mint condition. So he comes that day. We go up to my porch, which was on the second floor of my two family. He started to complain about the condition as soon as he saw it. The grill looked like it came out of the box after assembly. Then he started in on me, tossing in some crap on my back porch as compensation. At this point, I had it. I told him the price was firm and it was for the grill only. He was wasting my time, and if he didn't want it, there were four other people waiting. He relented and agreed to the price. The haggling threw me off my game, and I forgot to ask for cash. We carried the grill down and brought it over to his truck. I then remembered the cash. I asked him for it before we put it on his truck. He told me, let's get it on the truck, and then he would pay me. Right there, I was like, hell no. I knew as soon as it got up there, he was going to lowball me. We went back and forth for over five minutes. He insisted he would pay as soon as it was in his truck. He started to get pushy and belligerent. At this point, I told him the deal was off. He told me he was not leaving without the grill and it was not worth the 250 and I would be lucky to get what he was offering me. I walked into the house and got one of the printed emails from the buyers. I called him and asked if he wanted the grill. He said yes, but didn't have a truck. I told him we could drop it off in mine. Meanwhile, the guy in the driveway is yelling up that the price was getting lower for the longer I made him wait. I came down, told him to step off, that another buyer was coming. This guy happened to live in the same town. He told me I was full of crap and kept badgering me about getting the grill up on the truck. Well, the guy showed up in about 10 minutes that seemed to last forever. He looked at the grill and said deal and handed over the 250. Just out of spite, I threw in the cover. I did this in front of the original buyer, who went from belligerent to apologetic fairly quick. I told the new buyer what was going on and he laughed at the guy which sent him into a rage. He started screaming about his drive up, compensation, and a bunch of other crap. Me and the new guy ignored him and loaded the grill on my truck. I told him to step off and leave or I would call the cops and have him trespassed. He left, screaming all the way, calling me just about every name in the book. The new guy and I dropped the grill off at his house. His wife was happy at the deal and condition of the grill and I got a Genesis 3 burner. People really need to work on their negotiation skills. It's one thing to look for a better deal 
And even if they say the price is firm, it can't really hurt to try a little bit, but if they're getting annoyed and if they're not gonna budge, then just go with it. Come on, don't be that guy. This story's called, You getting money for your birthday means you're obligated to buy things for me. This happened to me a while back. I decided to go to the mall with one of my guy friends so we can hang out. Everything seemed normal at first, until my friend asked me to buy him something at a store. It wasn't very pricey, only $5, so I agreed to buy it for him. After I bought him the item, he and I kept going into other stores and he would keep asking me to buy him things. I obviously started to get irritated by this and kept telling him no. After we did some more browsing in stores, we decided to buy some Starbucks before heading back home. I had gotten a $25 Starbucks gift card for my birthday, so I told him that it would be my treat. While we were walking to Starbucks, my friend saw a haagen open in the food court. He said he wanted to get something from there instead. I wouldn't be paying for him since I wanted Starbucks and only had the gift card valid there. He didn't say anything back to me and rushed over to the haagen -Dazs. I followed him and saw him order an ice cream. When the employee finished making his ice cream, they gave him the total. I don't exactly remember how much it was, but I knew it would be a little bit more pricey since he asked for extra toppings and such. After they gave him the total, he looked over at me and just gave me a blank stare. Well, aren't you gonna pay for it? Um, no? But you said you'd be paying for our treats. No, I said I'd be paying for the Starbucks. But you wanted haagen so you'd be paying for it yourself. But if you have money for Starbucks, then you should have money for my ice cream. I only agreed to pay for the Starbucks because I have a gift card there. But didn't you get $500 for your birthday? You should have enough to buy me some things. It's not even that expensive. I did receive $500 for my birthday, but I didn't bring it all with me. Only $50, and I've already spent the rest of it on stuff for myself. But just because I got that for my birthday doesn't mean I have to spend it all on you. But it'd be nice of you to spend a little bit of it on me. He says that literally 15 minutes after asking me to buy him several different Funko Pops at GameStop. He and I kept arguing until his mom called him to say that she was outside waiting for us. He pulled out some cash and paid for his ice cream before storming off. You could imagine how aggravated I was when I saw him pay. This guy had money on him to pay for his food, but chose to have me pay for it just because I got money for my birthday. Just to clarify, I don't mind paying for a friend, depending on how much it is, but I won't be paying for them every time we go out somewhere that they're expected to bring their own money. He would still ask me once in a while if I wanted to go back to the mall with him, and I would say no know and remind him how he acted last time. He would always say the same thing over and over, that I should be more considerate of others and it wouldn't hurt for me to give him a hundred dollars or so of my birthday money. Yes, he actually said that to me. Oh man, that is a slippery freaking slope. Yeah, I 100% understand that whole, like I don't mind paying for a friend, but <laughs> that's just ridiculous. I'd sooner spend $50 on a friend who expects nothing of me than $5 on a friend who expects it of me. So this story's called, Choosing Beggar Roommate Thanks Money I Got From Family Counts Towards What She Owes Me. Okay, hi all. I would like to start off by saying this happened a few years ago and taught me to never move in with my best friend. Till at the bottom, onto the story. Roommate, a 21-year-old female, and I, a 20-year-old female, got a place together. I was having trouble with my family and so was she, but she explained to me she was getting kicked out. I had known her for six years at this point and she had a not so great family life. So when she told me her father was expecting too much of her and kicking her out for not meeting expectations, I believed her as this was nothing outside the norm, but that will come up later. I did all the research and found a perfect first place for two young adults. The rent was one quarter of our monthly incomes within 10 minutes of both our works 
near three grocery stores, near our banks, near the post office, and in a good neighborhood overall. I pulled a miracle out of my ass finding this place, to put it bluntly. Except, insert a sudden tale of woe as to how she lost her money for her half due to schooling issues and a parking ticket, leaving me pretty high and dry based on how short the notice was. So what did I do? I ponied up the money and paid first month rent, deposit, and took care of filling the apartment with food and cleaning supplies. We had it set immediately that she would pay me an agreed upon amount each month to settle the sizable debt, although my naive self would later find things wouldn't work so prettily. Anyhow, after that, I had less than $50 to my name to last me about a month, as I had just started the new job and my pay wouldn't be coming for a minute. Cue my mother and stepdad having a very heartfelt conversation and gifting me $400 as a housewarming gift for me to get set up. The conversation meant a lot to me and left a big impression on me. Lots of tears were shared. I was so happy with the whole situation, I told my roommate the story. Stupid, I know. And she zeroed in on my money I was gifted. So she just gave you $400 for no reason? Not really. She gave it to me for apartment stuff and because I have no money right now. Yeah, but that's for the apartment, right? Our apartment? I start to see where she is going with this immediately, and I don't like it. Can the $400 count toward what I owe you? Since you got the money for no reason, we can make it for what I owe. I was pretty appalled that she would even have the nerve to ask this. It was like a scene out of the X-Files to me. My awesome friend had been replaced with some money-hungry cryptid. I tried to remain civil. However, as I knew, that stress over money affects people differently. I don't think so. My mom gave it to me because she was proud of me. Not to pay your debt. It's mine, and why would you even ask that? She began sulking, avoiding eye contact, and mumbling her annoyance. These would be her norms when she didn't get her way over the next year. I really wish I could have gotten out of there sooner rather than later. I just thought maybe that could work out since she gave it to you for no reason. It would really help me out. It was beginning to annoy me that she kept bringing up that I was gifted the money by instead saying there was no reason for my mom to have given it to me. You owe me because I already helped you out. The next year living with her was a nightmare. She always had excuses as to why she couldn't pay this or that, yet she always had money for concerts and parties. She never cleaned. Ever. She would leave piles of tissues in every room on the floor, would use my cups and leave half full glasses of milk in her room to rot, just to name a few activities. I also found out that her slovenly nature was the real reason she was kicked out of her father's house in the first place. Both of her parents over the year we lived together would separately apologize to me out of embarrassment for their daughter's lack of cleanliness and her attitude. To her credit though, she did eventually pay me back after about three years, immediately following which she cut contact since the relationship had long since passed. Ah, seems like our girl there had some money management issues. Don't worry, we're, we've all been there. However, you should really get that sorted out once you're living on your own because rent is your first priority. This story's called, When Giving Him What He Wants Isn't Enough. Okay, something happened to me this morning and I just can't manage to let it go, so I want to unload it with you guys. This morning, I did what I usually do. In between buses, I have about 15 to 20 minutes before the next bus takes me to work. I could choose a closer window, but this minutes in the morning is kind of sacred to me. I buy a coffee, go to the sun deck in our city, and look over the water and our medieval castle. The morning light is amazing and gives me a boost of serenity 
sleep before the workday starts. So I'm standing there enjoying my coffee and a smoke. A man, it's always a dude, approaches me and asks me for a cig. I say, sure, of course, and hand him a cigarette. He takes it, bends down, and picks up my coffee. I look at him, quite surprised, and say, no, a cigarette. You can have a smoke, but not my coffee. I say the same sort of thing a couple of times before he replies. Just one sip. No, I reply. But please, pretty please, he says in a childish voice. No. He looks at me and says, are you sick? No, but in this time and place, you can't be certain. I can carry something. You can carry something. But it's okay, he says. I get really annoyed and say firmly, no, this is enough. Now give me my coffee. Then he looks at me and says, well, call the police then. Opens the lid and takes a huge sip and put it down with a bunch of insults while walking a couple of meters away and take a seat on a bench. It takes all of my power not to throw the stupid paper cup at him. I stand there, take a whole bunch of breaths. Then I see my bus rolling in and I see an opportunity. I see him watching me and my cup and I walk towards him. He lights up thinking I decided to just give him the coffee when I don't want it anymore. I stop half a meter in front of him and demonstratively open the lid and pour the coffee in the trash can. Then I get on my bus, wishing I dared give him the finger. But yeah, that's my story. I feel much better now. Thank you. Okay, um, having your routine ruined like that, especially when it involves like the sunrise and coffee and a beautiful view, you don't screw with that routine. You, it'll throw off their entire equilibrium, but thankfully he managed to restore spiritual balance, which is important. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.